Let's chat about the health benefits of sauna. This paper in 2021 showed that sauna helps us almost like exercise and that it helps our whole body be better. It targets this thing called heat shock proteins. They get activated and they stop bad proteins from clumping together. So that protects us against a whole bunch of diseases, Alzheimer's dementia, heart disease, Huntington's, Parkinson's. It slows the loss of muscle as we age. It actually reduces morbidity and mortality in a dose dependent manner. So the more sauna we have, the better we are. And what they found was it actually mimics exercise in the sense that it helps the entire body be healthier. It's not the first study that's been done. There's lots of little studies out there. This one in 2017 showed that moderate to high frequency of sauna was associated with lower risks of dementia and Alzheimer's dementia. What about if we combine sauna with other things? You know, if we combine it, combine it with, uh, you know, exercise, if we combine it with relaxation, uh, what they found is it compounds. Okay, so sauna actually reduces the incidence of vascular and non-vascular disease, high blood pressure, dementia, chest conditions, COVID-19, headaches, flu, and it actually increases our lifespan. The thinking is the way it increases our lifespan is its profound positive impact on our blood pressure and it being an anti-inflammatory, antioxidant uh, thing to experience. Right, a bit like exercise, in the long run, it actually is very, very good for the body. It has effects on our hormones, on our blood circulation, and our immune function. It actually also reduces our risk of sudden cardiac death and all-cause mortality. So that's a pretty profound finding. It's a safe, cheap, enjoyable way to actually reduce our risk of pretty catastrophic heart disease and heart attacks. The only study saying there was a danger really were people drinking in the sauna, drinking alcohol, and that's just silly, okay? That's not what we suggest. But what they found is when you combine things like exercise, it actually confers substantial risk reductions compared to just exercise alone. So sauna plus exercise is the best way to improve our arterial stiffness, decrease inflammation, stabilize our autonomic nervous system. What about young people with no problems? Well, this study found that it actually can improve bone and muscle mass. So once you're done in the gym, if you want to boost your muscles even more, get in the sauna. Regular sauna in this paper, again, another big medical journal reduces the risk of developing high blood pressure. So not only is it a good treatment, but it actually reduces your risk of developing these problems years later. What about people with depression? This study found it actually helps people who are just mildly depressed and have low appetite. So sauna helps improve those symptoms. Chronic fatigue syndrome. This paper found improvements in fatigue, pain, low grade fever, a bunch of things improved. Another study in chronic fatigue, this one was used in the um, Japanese style sauna, and it actually changed blood flow in a positive way in the brain. Sweating is also good for detox. This study found you can sweat out arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury. So you want to shower with soapy water straight away after the sauna so you don't reabsorb those toxins. It's also good for getting rid of organophosphates and other, uh, you know, insect, re insect repellents and insect killing chemicals. Big increase came out in the sweat when they did uh, a test in this study. There was a paper back in the uh, 90s, I think it was, for Gulf War Syndrome. Uh, so this was 2019. Um, Gulf War Syndrome bets came back just exposed to a ton of chemicals. Really, really sick. And what they found is three months of some basic supplements to help detox and sauna significantly improved pain and fatigue with no adverse effects. And the, the benefits were maintained months later. 
What about chronic tension type headaches? These are really common these days. We're all very stressed. Sauna actually reduced the intensity of the headaches quite significantly. It didn't change the duration, but it did significantly improve the intensity. Is it safe if you've got a bad heart? This study specifically looked at people who were so sick they couldn't have heart surgery, and it actually improved their function. So this study basically concluded it is safe for people even if they've got heart disease. Now, obviously, be sensible. Don't, you know, if you're feeling funny, don't stay in the heat. You want to have enough water, enough electrolytes, and discuss this with your doctor first. But it's a very interesting strategy for helping even people who are very unwell. This study in uh, the journal Cardiology, very reputable paper, uh, uh, scientific journal, found people with chronic heart failure, it actually improved their function as well. So it improved the over enlar the enlarged heart and it was considered an innovative and promising therapy for people with chronic heart failure. Another medical journal, another year, another study. Repeated sauna treatment improves ventricular arrhythmias in patients with chronic heart failure. So these are the funny heartbeats that end up killing people. So a lot of the medications people are on are trying to keep these rhythms in check. Um, this was an interesting strategy to actually improve all that. Again, combining sauna with exercise, improved vascular function, improved mental health, and heart health, in, even with people in people with very sick hearts, the chronic heart failure patients. The evidence is that it improves the vascular endothelial function. This is like the plumbing inside. This is the bit that really matters. Because of that, the whole circulation gets better. The entire heart function and the way you feel improves. Yet another study, this one with uh, exercise and sauna, found it affected uh, in a positive way, blood pressure, cholesterol, a range of symptoms and uh, health problems. What about doing yoga and sauna? Well, it actually improved the, um, the flexibility quite significantly in older patients. So there's a test called the chair sit and reach test. And basically it's a, it's a way to measure flexibility. Uh, balance also improved and falls in elderly patients is a major, major, major concern because most people who have a fall are dead within 12 months, right? So we really wanna avoid those falls. And this was an interesting way to do that. Is it safe for children? Well, you know, Finnish children aren't traditionally really allowed in the sauna before they're seven years old. And it does, the heat does affect children and there's no clear guidelines. So I guess be safe, think about it. Uh, possibly don't let children in the sauna might be a smart way to do it. But in, you know, in the Finnish culture for hundreds of years, it has been a part of their family traditions is what they do. What about people who are um, pregnant? Well, you know, again, be cautious. The evidence is it can be potentially bad if you're very early in the pregnancy. So I would say, look, like most things, when you're pregnant, take it easy, be more cautious, don't do sauna. What about if you just had an operation and you've got stitches, can you sauna? You know, a lot of doctors would say, no, don't do that. It'll be bad for the healing. Well, actually, this paper said there is absolutely no reason to not sauna with sutures. It won't affect wound healing. It won't cause complications or infections. So go on, treat yourself. Go and have some sauna.